So nice to see all of you. Hello. Yesterday I sat in that corner because they, the audience kind of goes over here. So. <laughs> all right. Well, it's nice to be back. It's nice to see uh, some of the same people that I saw yesterday. And if you're going to see me again, I can't believe. So yeah, so I mean, this is pretty good to be. Pretty good to be. What? Pretty good to be. I can talk. I'm, uh, I came in on the red eye yesterday, and we went to Ebor and party last night, so I'm like, I'm not going to swap But all right, yeah, I guess we'll keep it pretty informal. I mean, we can just start going straight to questions and, and, and ask. Let's them. do this. Yeah, started on this side last time, so we'll start over here this time. All right. How are you guys? I'm doing well. How are you? Is there ever going to be a musical episode of Voltron? <laughs> I wish I could say yes. Uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's probably not. Oh, only yeah. the only way it'll happen is if like somebody really creative comes up with some idea. And right. I mean, like, look, <laughs> I, I put out the Moana thing, and yeah. I'm working on a Spanish song, so like. If they don't give you an official musical, then then I'll, I'll make sure you guys have some. Can you write a little song, too? I can't. Yeah. I don't what? know. What would be a little song? Yeah, I need some little ways to express yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Because Kimberly can sing too. I love singing. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get it. Someone needs to write me a song. Yeah. <laughs> give me some uh, suggestions or tag us in our socials on what do you think would be a little more song. Yeah, I think AJ actually said that he had a good low tour in the Lourdes. Like, do oh, it. And I can't remember what it was, but I know it was something good. Interesting. Hey, I'll have to talk to AJ. Hey. Hello, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good. Um, I just want to know, can you guys do your best line from Voltron? All right. Um, you go first. <laughs> well, I don't know if this is the best line, but I mean, I, I like it. <clears throat> if you're too worried about what could go wrong, you might miss a chance to do something great. Yeah. <laughs> that was brilliant. Um, I don't know, something about you really activating my particle there. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Hi. How much do you 
I love it. I love it. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. I love how you can play against type. You can, you can, you know, it's, if I was, He's so cute. Oh, so, uh, makes me just yeah. like it. Um, yeah, I love that you can play parts that you aren't physically the same. Yeah. Yeah. If it was live action, I'd never would have been asked to play Shiro, because I'm not this. Um, but they've CGI. Yeah, CGI. Yeah. Um, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> oh, on a scale of 1 to 10 and 11, um, and just what Josh was saying, like, so many of the characters, I definitely wouldn't be, uh, well, I might be Laura, but I wouldn't be um, probably 90% of the characters that I voice. So, definitely love it. Are getting, now that people have a little bit of props for voice actors, I get to come out and meet people that um, are fans of what we do, and it's just, it's so fulfilling and exciting, and um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything else, I don't think. This is pretty much it. Um, this is what we do. Yeah. So, I love it. Thank you. Hi. Um, so, I have a question, and my question is, um, what's like the craziest thing that has ever happened on, like, when you were recording for the series? When we were recording? <laughs> The recording sessions actually aren't too crazy. Like, we don't have a whole lot of time to record them. We basically, they book out about four hours for an episode. And within that four hours, we have to record not just the episode, but also if there's pickups for another episode, we have to get them at that time as well. So we try to kind of keep it moving. But I mean, we, we're always cracking jokes in the studio, like, always. And, and sometimes uh, our voice director, Andrea, would have to wrangle us and, and say, all right, all right, guys, we gotta, we gotta get this in there. Um, but I mean, there's really, there's really not a lot of craziness that, that happens. I mean, aside from just cracking jokes, I and mean, we talk about this all the time. But you know, there's we talk about the brown line, which is you know always, always fart jokes. Don't mention the brown line. Brown. Yeah. 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 That kind of stuff. That's that's pretty much what what is uh, happening in between takes. Just just horsing around, being silly. Um. Yeah. That's that's yeah. You took my answer, Josh, because that's pretty much it. He's, he's, he's got, he's, he's like been reborn and he's, he's, 
just that moment, but hopefully I'm scared. I loved that moment in, yeah. in season seven where he, that happens. That was, oh, I love it. That was, that was Jamie chose. Jamie chose. Yeah, everybody's like looking at him and expecting him to lead. And, and he does. And he does. He steps up and he does it. Hi, I just want to have a question. Um, how did you guys come up with the uh, characters' uh, accents, I should say? Hmm. Like, how did you come up with the voices for that particular character? Uh, I just looked at the art, and I, I kind of read what they, the brief character description that they gave for him. Um, but it's weird, like they actually had us, or with me, change my voice a little bit because Tonally, my voice and Stephen Young's place are in a very similar place, so they had him pitch himself up a bit and had me pitch down so that there would be more separation in our voices. So that was really the only like change from up above that kind of came, um, that changed what I brought in, just what I was bringing in. Um, and then obviously, you know, Sven, like his Sven, because he's Sven. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that I really was just, I had no idea where to go with that. I didn't want it to be like the 80s version because that was a much more over the top accent, which in the tone of our show would have really stuck out and would have distracted. So I wanted to be a little more grounded. And so for that, like, I was just watching Yovis videos and anything that I could watch that was like even remotely Scandinavian. Um, and, and you need to tell how you didn't even know you were going to Yeah, no, I didn't even know that I was going to be smacked until the night before the session. Because like, this really is really late, and that was one of those where we got the scripts at like nine o'clock. Yeah, night. we get the scripts at nine o'clock for a nine in the morning session. Sleep still has to happen. Um, so, and I also live about forty minutes out of the area, so I have to like commute and rush out. So, you know, I have to get up at like six. I get the script at nine. Still got to figure out some time to sleep. No idea what I'm going to do for this accent. Um, but yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea I was even going to be doing that until the night before. It was terrifying. And, <laughs> and just quickly for Alora. I think they just wanted to make, you know, she's 10,000 years older than everybody else, and she's royal, and she's from a different planet, so I think they just really wanted to distinguish her from the Rappi Paladins, um, and so I worked with a dialect coach, J.B. Blanc. I was called him J.B. Smooth the other day. <laughs> He's, He's I was like, no, totally different guy. Um, but, um, so I worked with a dialect coach for a couple of sessions, and then I think then uh, that kind of stuck, and then all of the... Uh, the bad guys kind of have the same sort of accent too, so that's that's where how it came about. Well, you both did a great job. Um, thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, we have a question for Jamie. Um, I think you'd probably be a better person to answer. I think Altaians are very just open, accepting people, and they're not in any way judgmental. Like everyone looks different, and no one's like even Alora. I mean, she's got darker skin, and I don't think there's any judgment, and I think there's acceptance and love, and, and that's how the Altaian people are. I, I, that's what I believe, and that's I think it would be wonderful and beautiful, and she probably really want to meet whoever she really is in love with. Yeah. At least in this reality. In the good reality. Yeah. 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 Because when, for those of you who don't know, I was in a boy band in the 90s. And, 
What I was shows that I ever did was at a place which no longer exists called the Roxy. And, um, and it was with Destiny's Child. And this was the original lineup when it was still before, because you know they hadn't blown up yet. They were still doing the song that they were doing was it wasn't even say my name. It was a song called I Know That. Oh no no yeah. And, and so that uh, you know I, I I know her and like I I gotta support her. So I don't know her yet. Sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's so, really cool. So my question is, what was the biggest plot twist on the show involving your character? The Atlas. <laughs> well, no, that's not even the biggest one. Like, yeah, I guess maybe in Port of Call, finding out that he was that he was dead since season two. That would be cute. Remember, everyone asked you before that everyone would be like, if you are Shiro. Right, right, right. Not my Shiro, not my space dad. Not my Shiro. That was a meme. That was a meme everywhere. Um, um, so mine probably stuffs. You guys still have another season coming up, and a lot of stuff's gonna be happening. Ooh, um, oh so I don't know, but from what we've seen, obviously when she becomes uh, Allura, finally can pilot the uh, Blue Lion. That was kind of huge. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. No big deal. Pilot now. It's a big deal. Pilot and Paladin. Paladin and Allura. I'm gonna go here, 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 and then I'm gonna jump to the other side. All right, other side. What was your personal favorite season? Oh, that's hard. Um, hmm. I like the first season. Uh, because there's a lot of lore stuff in there. <laughs> a lot of backstory, which a lot of shows don't go into the backstories of the characters. And just seeing, you know, what happened to my planet, my father, and all of that stuff. And the way they set the show up, it was just really exciting to play. So I had a lot of juicy stuff to do. A lot of flashbacks and, you know, really cool, cool scenes. So that was really fun, just as, from an actor standpoint. I would have to probably say the first season, too. And not that I don't like the other season. I love the other seasons. And there's, like, it's just hard to, to pick a favorite season, because there's so many episodes within each season that I would say, oh, this was my favorite. All overall, I was like, and they're all from different seasons. But I love how, I mean, the first season really got everything going. It set everything up. It, it, it started this roller coaster. And, uh, and, and I love it for that. Garrison Trio stuff. I, I dig that stuff. Because, like, it's happy times. You know? I, I love them being silly. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm, I'm still happy. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, what is your favorite meme? Yes. Which one? I'm going to steal that. That's a good one. That's a really good one. The particle, but I mean, Lance has a ton of right now. He's a he's a walking on Everything he does is mean worthy. Is this sort of like someone else's question? Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? <laughs> oh, Cardi B. <laughs> she has no fear. I respect her. Yeah. She's come out. Ooh. <laughs> She's one of these. Yeah, she just came on the scene and just took over and all she is. You gotta love that. And that whole beat where like she showed up and uh, <laughs> tried to get in the fight and oh man. I yeah. love it. It's crazy. Yeah, she's a pleasure. She's real man. Yeah. So I went back to front. I'm gonna go front to back. I love your dress. You look so pretty. Thank you. I if there was a live action movie besides yourselves, what Hollywood person would you want Ooh. to play your character? Nice question. Because obviously we would be playing the character. <laughs> yeah. I guess if I'm not available. <laughs> you go first. I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, it could be anything. 
Especially after the Moana thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? I gave him an end right there. So yeah. Yeah, we're on. We're off to be a good show. Yeah. Yes, he absolutely is. Yeah. And he and Beyonce would, you know, he makes actually kind of makes Cheryl look small. Oh, he does. He's, he's a big dude. He is. Yeah, oh. yeah, he's bigger than Cheryl. Okay, alright. Hi, again. Um, so this is probably another weird question, but if she were an Alora, since they're back on Earth, what, because they're like now the poster children of like the thing, what cereal box would we be in front of? <laughs> Great, yeah. No, of course, sure, it'll be Wheaties. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you will be when you meet your Wheaties, yes. I think Laura would be like something like more fun, like like We're Lucky Charms or something. Like all the stars and the, I don't know, the moons and all that stuff, maybe. Yeah, and she, she probably wouldn't like the sugar and the milk and all that stuff. She's like, I don't know. Now that she knows. Yeah. <laughs> she probably would be like, I just water in my cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you the meat question yesterday? No, that, that, was, that, was, that was a great question. I was the one that followed it up with Lois, so like, you'd be going to be the adopters to be the leader of the Netflix. If they're back on Earth, what kind of dog would your characters adopt? Oh, I love that question. That is a really good question. Mm. Well, with Shiro, it would be a rescue no matter what it is. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe a husky? I'm not even sure. like the white patch with the same matching hair patch. Or maybe a three legged dog. I'm not saying that to be mean, you know, if they need love to. Um, that's that's what we were talking about before. It's so great 
to be a voice actor because you have the ability to just put yourself in another role um, and you can just roll with it. You're not limited to by what you look like or you know your physicality. So um, that's the beauty part of what I get to do. So I have so many crazy characters that you know people. That's a question I get a lot. Like, how do you do you know Jasper and also Alora? It's like when you're in that session with with the writers and those directors, it's just its own <coughs> moment. So everything is sort of separate, and, and that's what's so great about what I get to do. So. I, and I don't really think of myself as like, oh, I'm so versatile, but when I look at, I've been doing this for 20 years, and I look at all the characters, there's a little bit of um, versatility in it. I like that. It's, just, it's cool. It's really awesome. Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, so, in season six, Monsters and Mana episode, um, <laughs> nice. that was how I got introduced to Voltron, so I was wondering, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew nothing about it, so I was wondering if you guys have ever played Dungeons and Dragons in real life? And if not, what would be your ideal role to play in d, &D? Oh, I wish I knew. I have never played Dungeons and Dragons, but um, now I know everyone else is. Apparently, I need to. I haven't played with it. No, but you play. Um, I play WoW, which is not really the same. It's, it's, it's got some similarities because like there's still stats and classes and races and all that different stuff. But it's not. I mean, you're you're not like actually you know acting it out and improving and doing all that. You're just you know, casting spells. But um, yeah, no, I, I would love to play D and D. I have a lot of friends that play it. Bex plays it a lot. Um, you know, my buddy. Matt Mercer does critical role. And, uh, yeah, I, I would love to do it just to, just to give it a try. Um, I'm not too familiar with all the classes in that particular game. I know that in WoW I always play a druid. No matter what. Like, I've tried other classes and I always end up going back and doing a druid. So, wow. I, I don't know. I we need to get a game going, I guess. Yeah, we gotta do Someone it. Someone needs to teach me how to play. <laughs> What do you think I would, what should I pick or choose? Oh. Um, a cleric? But still a fighter. Oh, yeah, that's, I'm a cleric. I want to heal and fight. I'd probably so you can do both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Unless there are druids in the Indian, then I don't want to do that. Are there? All right, I'm a druid here. I was um, ex luckily exposed to theater and like puppetry when I was really young, and I just saw it, and I was like, I want to do that when I was really, really little, and that was it. I just did children's theater, theater in high school, theater major, um, started a theater company in LA, um, so I've just been doing it my whole life. So that's why I feel really lucky because my kids, my kids are teenagers and they have no idea what they want to do. They're both really bright, really smart. They can pick anything, but they don't know. And I feel really lucky because I always knew, and I was always passionate about it. So um, that's kind of what inspired me. <laughs> I actually was inspired later in life. Uh, I grew up in business. I was a child actor. Um, it's something that I, I have three sisters, they were all in the industry, we all kind of like this entertainment family and grew up doing like theater and like extra work in the beginning and we started doing commercials and like kind of came up just from, from the beginning of the industry, or from the, from the bottom of the industry, honestly. And um, I mean, I was just kind of going along with the motions, I loved doing it, I had a lot of fun, but even as like a teenager, like, I was kind of in that same place where I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I, I had done a lot of on-camera acting, but you know, guest parts here and there, small films, nothing really too huge. Um, but I liked it. I've also done a lot of voice acting. I really liked it. I was in a boy band. I really liked. It. I, I, I had no idea which path I wanted to follow. And it wasn't until I was probably in my mid twenties that I really realized I really love doing this. I love the business. I love the people I work with. I love. Um, I love the fact that I can play against type because when I was growing up in, in uh, when I was growing up in the business, I would always run into the same thing, which was my look never worked for anything. So if I would be sent out to audition for something like, like a Caucasian role, because I'm Latino, 
when I would audition for something, I was Caucasian, the first thing I always get asked was, oh, what's your background? And it was very obvious that I was not Caucasian enough for this role. Mm -hmm. And then when I would get sent out to audition for Latino roles, I'd go in there, I'd know my scene, I'd be speaking Spanish, and they'd be like, are you Latino? I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, you have blue eyes. I'm like, what does that mean? It's, uh, and so that was like the story of my acting life. It's like I was either not white enough for this or not black enough for this. And so didn't really know what I was, what, what I could play. Like my agents had a hard time pitching me for things and all of that. But with voiceover, it's just, I went in and if you can play the part, you can play the part. That's what I love about it. And that's, that's really when I realized, hey, this is, this is like, I still love doing my camera acting. I think now that I've gotten older and I'm not really, when, you, when you're young, you have a lot more insecurities because you're still trying to find yourself. And now that I'm old enough, I don't care. <laughs> I feel like I'm at, at, at a different place where I, I can probably play certain parts on camera and it's not, it's not going to be an issue. But um, I mean, that's, that's really why I like it. But then when I realized that how much I liked it, then I started thinking about all the things in earlier in life that I would say inspired me, which I didn't really realize inspired me until I was thinking about it. And one of those would be like, I would listen to these like, cassette tapes with the, the storybook, kind of like the long stuff. I love those when I was young, I do those all the time. And uh, my dad would go and he would go to the library and he would like make these bootleg copies of the, uh, <laughs> the records, the records of like movie soundtracks where they, they would actually release like the movie soundtrack. It wasn't just like songs, it was like the whole movie soundtrack. With the, with the dialogue. Dialogue and everything. So I had like the Jungle Book, I'd listen to that over and over and over. Um, and then when I was in fifth grade, I had this teacher who every day after lunch recess, when all the kids were tired, he would read us a chapter from the Wall Doll book. And that was like the highlight of my day. That was like what I looked forward to every day because he would do the voices, and he wasn't a voice actor, but he would do his best attempt at you know what he thought the BFG sounded like or what, <laughs> what the twit sounded like, and, and and I loved it. And that was that that was like the high point of my day, and that's kind of how I do that. So. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so one thing that I really love about Voltron are all of the different species and groups that you get to see. So what would you guys say is your personal favorite race or faction that we get to see throughout the course of the show? I love those mermaids. Remember the mermaids? Yes. <laughs> they were just like, and she was going a little bit crazy. But, um, oh, yeah. Really? But um, yeah, that was it. I just, I don't know. I think I'm just obsessed with mermaids. So yeah, I thought it was really mermaids in space. I just thought that was cool. <laughs> The Bebo Bees. Yeah. I love the Bebo Bees. I love how they're like, how Bebo Bee is like a celebrity. Like he's this intergalactic celebrity that everybody knows. And I, I love The that. best is Karan's reaction when he's watching them. He's yeah. just cracking up and he's like, I want to know what happened. <laughs> Bebo Bees. I remember once they asked me to, because you do it, I've done it, but you do it, Jeremy does it, and Max does the Bebo Bee. Yeah. And then one time you guys weren't there. <laughs> and they needed some Bebo Bee pickups, and I was like, I don't know. No, no, I it's Bebo Bee. Bebo Bee. It's more up kind of in like the post things area. I can't do it. Yeah, I was like, it's I just tried to do it. Yeah, it's a mic. There you go. Will we get more story on Adam? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, I mean, we can't really talk about nothing in the future. So. Can't confirm right now. You know, I said, don't confirm right now. No, I don't confirm we're denied spoilers. We're possible spoilers. Hi. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you believe in angels? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I absolutely do. I do. Okay. I mean, I think that the universe is endless in all directions, and there's billions of galaxies, each with billions of stars, trillions of stars, and each with things orbiting them, possibly, well, planets, moons, whatever, and I mean, to, I don't know, I, I think it would be really, really a shame if, if, if we were to. I, I think it's arrogant for us to think that we're, old, we're the only species, we're the only ones out in the universe, yeah. and I have a dream from when I was a kid that I 
some sort of visit when I was a kid, and I'm like, did I make that up? But I keep thinking about it, and it's like, it's from a time in a house that I lived in that I don't remember. I barely remember because I was really, really little, but I remember this incident that I made up in my head, and I remember all the details of my room. So I don't know. There's something there. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm, they're out there. <laughs> Hi. Um, what would you say is your animal show? Like Colton, if you're a cosmic, like... Oh, they're all awesome. Let me a cosmic. You see those fight scenes? Yeah. with the tall and the court? Oh, I was freaking out when I was watching that scene. That was amazing. And I'm a dog person. I, 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 yeah. I know, me too. I'm so I'm the mice. Come on. The mice know everything that's happening on the ship. They run, they're pretty much running it. Um, the, the one random time where uh, Coran walks in and he's like, Have you seen the mice? They've got something in mind. And then he just walks out and I'm like, What do you think? Did you like, say again? Yeah, again. Like, 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 it's like a thing going on with him and the mice. I don't know what's happening with I him. I want to see a mice episode. Uh, there is, to me. Great. This is why the show needs to keep going. Yeah, see, there's so many things we have to <sighs> So many finish things. business. But yeah, the mice are awesome. I don't know their names, but they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Bex, no, I always call her Pitch. Yeah. Bex, she is Pitch. She knows their names. She does. And someone asked her in like a trivia thing. And she just like whipped them out. How do you know that? <laughs> She's amazing. Out of all the um, episodes that you guys have voiced over, which one was your favorite voice? Did you say all out of the, out out of the episodes? Out of every thing. Out of Voltron. Yeah. Oh, Voltron. Oh, there's so many. Well, honestly, my favorite hasn't aired yet. Um, so. <laughs> I would say my favorite would be either Monsters in Anna yeah. or, um, or the Black Dollar. For different reasons. Oh, yeah. They're both really good. The mall episode's pretty cool, too. Yeah. Even though I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, but. Yeah, it's really funny. Um, I don't know, like, if you had all the, like, if you had a lion and all the paladin. What would you do? Anything I want. <laughs> no, I would, I would seriously go fly somewhere. I would go, go to uh, some other planet, go to Mars. But I got the suits, I could go anywhere. I mean, I'd go to Jupiter and see, see what's all up in, under those clouds and under all that pressure. I would just keep my same life, but I would use it to like beat traffic in LA. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I would just hover above the profile. To get where I'm going, and I would just be like, "Oh my God, that would make me happy." That's that's how important that would be to me to get to where I need to go. Have you been to LA? Can you imagine? You've been on the park that thing, though. Are you gonna park it? It'll just hover. It'll just hover. It'll be like our cars. It'll just come through. We'll just call it. Summon it. Summon it. Come to me. Five minutes. No. I know. No. Awesome question. Most appropriate time to put up Christmas decorations. Oh. <laughs> after Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I think well after Thanksgiving. Because why is there already like Christmas stuff? Like I went to Costco the other day and there's a Christmas tree the first thing I walked in. We don't even got a whole room. Come on. Give the pumpkin some love. They're really two ahead and then yeah. But more importantly, when is it? A proper time to take down Yes. Because I remember like driving around the summer in LA and still seeing Christmas trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that Shira's biggest weakness is that he doesn't seek help from others and he holds everything in. He, he internalizes everything. And that's that's another that's a big reason why he, it's so much of a struggle for him. Uh, and and, it, and in, at least in my opinion, it comes from a, a good place. I mean, he doesn't want to make his burdens everybody else's burdens. Um, he's, he's still trying to be there for everybody and not make everybody's, his problems everybody else's. But I, I do think that it, it does work against him, for sure. That's a good that is a really good question, by the way. Because 
I don't think I've ever been asked that because it's like, oh, Laura's doing this and she's so great. She's so strong. But it's like, yeah, we all have things that make us strong, things that are, you know work against us. Um, I think she's pretty awesome now. So um, I would say one of her biggest flaws is her taste in men. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 